Hey, yo, boys. All right, today we're reacting to Jordan Peterson's dating advice. So without further ado, if you're brand new, be sure you subscribe to the channel and drop a like, baby. Let's have a listen. Let me ask for some dating advice from Jordan Peterson. How do you find on that topic the love of your life? Okay, let me try to answer this question before, Jordan. How do you find the love of your life? Well... There's many ways, but the easiest way, in my opinion, not the easiest, but the most, yes, the most straightforwardest way is to go out a lot and talk to a lot of different women. Let's see what Jordan says. That's a good question. I was asked that multiple times on my tour, three times in a row, in fact, because we asked people to use this Slido gadget. That's a popular question. To vary. It always came up to the top. And I got <laughs> asked that three times in a row, and I didn't have a good answer. And then I thought, why don't I have a good answer? Because there's not one straightforward answer to that. There's no one size fits all, man. There's different things. You know, some guys can just go out once and then find the love of their life. Some guys can go out for like thousands of weeks and hours and still not find the right one you know what i'm saying oh i know why because that's a stupid question <laughs> so so why yeah why <laughs> because it's it's putting the cart before the horse here's the right question putting the cart before the how horse. how do i make myself into the perfect date you answer that question and you will not have any problem answering the previous question it's like what i want in a partner mm -mm. If I offered everything I could to a partner, who would I be? You work on that. Ask that question. Just ask. Just ask yourself, okay, I have to be the person that women would want. And that's easy generally to be, well, it's not easy to achieve, but it's easy to know what they would want. Now, I'll give you the top two things. Number one is your status, like who are you in the world? And number two, it's so also linked to the first one, which is your money situation. Do you have your shit together? Are you still living in your mom's apartment? Or are you living by yourself and you're making some good money? You know what I'm saying? Okay, what do they want? Somebody with good money, somebody's got his shit together, and somebody's got a bit of status. In it? That's not a bad start. And then a good body and then like good health and all that stuff is, more, is important as well. You know what I'm saying? Reasonably good physical shape. So healthy, productive, generous, honest, willing to delay gratification. I don't know about being honest because bitches just want to be told what they want to hear. You know what I'm saying? So you dance with a woman. It's like, what's she doing? What are you two doing? Well, it's a pattern. You're, there's patterns happening around you. That's the music. Patterns. Patterns of being. That's the music. Now, can you align yourself with the patterns of being gracefully? That's what she's checking out. And then can you do that with her? And then can you do that in a playful and attentive manner and keep your bloody hands to yourself for at least a minute? And so can you dance in a playful manner? It's like you can go through this in your imagination and you know, you'll know, you know. And then you think, well, how far am I from those things? And the answer is usually, man, it's a pretty horrible abyss separating you from that ideal. But the harder you work on offering other people what they need and want, the more people will line up to play with you. And so it's the wrong question. It's like, how can I be the best partner possible? And then you think, well, if I do that, people will just take advantage of me. And mm. that... Yes, that's the thing. People will take advantage of you. They'll try to take advantage of your time, your energy, your money. So you got to be careful. You know what I'm saying? That's the non-naive objection, right? Because the naive person is saying, well, I'll be good and everyone will treat me right. It's like the cynic says, no, I'll be good and someone will take me out. And then you think, mm. well, what do you do about that objection? And the answer is, well, you factor that in. And that's why you're supposed to be what is it? As soft as a dove and as wise as a serpent. It's like, I know you're full of snakes. 
I know it. Maybe I know it more than you do. But we'll play anyways. And Take that's the good. risk that's, anyway. That, mm, that's um. What is that word? What is that word called? That's courage, my guy. You know, like feeling the fear or feeling the pain or feeling the scaredness, just feeling and still doing it regardless of the fear or the pain or like whatever. That's right. Voluntarily, right? It's like, and th- what's so cool about that is that even though the person you're dealing with is full of snakes, if you offer your hand in trust and it's real, you will evoke the best in them. Yeah. And that's true. Even I've dealt with people who were pretty damn crim- criminal and pretty psychopathic. And some. Yeah, I'd say I'm a little bit of a psychopath in the next room. Sometimes dangerously so. And you tread very lightly when you're dealing with someone like that, especially if they're intoxicated. And even then, your best bet is that alert trust. It's the, it's the only, in fact, the only thing I know that like I had one client who was a paranoid, he was paranoid psychopath. That's a bad combination. He was a bad guy, man. He had like four restraining orders on him. And restraining orders don't work on the sort of people that you put restraining orders on. And he used to be harassed now and then by, you know, a bureaucrat in a bank with with delusions of power. And he would say to them, he, he used to kind of act this out to me when I was talking to him. He'd say, I'm going to be your worst nightmare. <laughs> and he meant it. Yeah. And he would do it. He had this obsessional, psychopathic vengeance that was just like right there, paranoid to the hilt. And paranoid people are hyper acute. So they're watching you for any sign of deceit or manipulation. And they're really good at it because like they're 100% focused. That's what paranoia is. It's 100% focus on that. And even under those circumstances, if you step carefully enough, you can maybe you can avoid the acts. That's a good thing to know if you ever meet someone truly dangerous. Uh, Absolutely. I believe in that, that being fragile, nevertheless, taking that leap of trust towards another person, even when they're dangerous, especially when they're dangerous. If you care, if there's something there in those hills you want to find, Mm -hmm. then that's probably the only way you're going to find it is Mm -hmm. taking that risk. All right, boys, that's all I got for that video, man. I really hope you guys enjoy. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new or right. You're old, man. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.